Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show hope everybody is doing well if you are brand new to us and to the channel uh like subscribe share all that good stuff so you could be uh notified when we upload again we usually upload monday through wednesdays and i take uh thursday night off to kind of just to decompress my brain so i can be ready for friday's session if i have something to kind of take care of during the week then i will uh take that day off and then record on thursday but either way uh three days and then another a weekend update so hopefully you guys will continue to get uh value so what a crazy week okay so let's go back okay let's go back I, the, the crazy thing about wall street is and, and i've been doing this it's next may it's going to be 25 years for me um the craziest thing about wall street is when you think that when the world is about to end okay and nothing could be right and there's nothing that could save the market usually the craziest things usually come back and this is where a lot of new traders uh, start to try to rationalize a very irrational type of market. And it'll always be irrational. It doesn't make a difference how long you trade. Whatever you think makes sense, you can throw it out the window. The market does things that are absolutely irrational. And the most important part is you always have to understand uh, the statement, the market will stay irrational uh, longer than you can stay solvent. So never fight the take. That's first of all. So let's go back, right? Let's go back to March of 2020. March in 2020 uh, was the whole lockdown pandemic thing. And if you guys remember, March of 2020 was like the worst month for equities in a very, very long time. And it looked like the world was over. We were on lockdown. We we're faced with some crazy stuff that we never get. Think about it. We're, we're faced with a, a global pandemic in our lifetime in 2020. And it was followed by just be, when you thought that the market was going to go to hell and that's it, this is over. Here comes the crash, worse than 1927. The market followed up by its worst uh, single month in a very, very long time. In April 2020, followed that up with the best month of you know, in a very, very long time. And that's, again, the whole point of it doesn't need to be rational. It doesn't need to make sense. It doesn't need to make sense that uh, the world went to a standstill for two, three weeks, everything locked down, people dying, so forth and so on. And then the market had the most incredible rally uh, in 2020, right? So fast forward, okay? Two weeks ago, we looked like we were about to fall off a cliff, okay? Every level, if you've been following uh, this broadcast, every level got confirmed on the queues. Uh, you lost a 10-day, lost a 100-day, lost a 150-day, and we just came a little bit shy of the 200 day moving average. And it looked like that's it. It's the end of the world. We're going to go back to uh, 2000 and, uh, you know, we're going to go back to the 200 day moving average and boy, oh boy, we don't want to get below it. And it felt like that's it. Christmas is done. Cancel Christmas. Santa Claus is done. You know, this is going to be the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen. And this is why we play the game. Uh, in the last two weeks, um, in the last, well, the last two weeks or so, we saw a 6% plus move down uh, in the NASDAQ. Okay. What we saw this week was absolutely extraordinary and it mirrored what happened after the worst month in March of 2020 to the best month. So here's the staggering numbers in case you haven't, if you, in case you haven't noticed, or you weren't trading this week, um, this was the best week for equities since, well, definitely since 2023. Okay. Uh, this is the first five day consecutive streak winning streak uh, since June. Okay. This is a long, long time ago. And just look at, listen to these numbers. Okay. Look at these numbers. The Dow Jones industrial average for the week was up 5%. Okay. That's his best move since October of 2022. That's pretty bam, damn big. The S and P was up nearly 6%. Okay. And the NASDAQ composite that lost 6% in two weeks made up almost nearly 7% for the week. Just absolutely uh, staggering numbers. Uh, Friday, we had the, the gravy train continue to go. And, and one of the most bullish things that we saw on Friday, despite Apple uh, not having great earnings, right? Yeah, a nice recovery towards the end of the day. But years ago, if Apple would have, you know, blown up, well, I don't know if were blown up, but if, you know, if Apple would miss earnings or at least perceived to miss earnings 
And Apple at one point on Thursday night was down, what, four or five points? The NASDAQ futures would have been down lock limit, okay? Absolute lock limit. And this is how, you know, you change as a trader. I mean, years ago, I would have been like, all right, just short everything on, our, on the first bounce. But it doesn't happen that way. You know, we talked about it on the Thursday video. Can the bulls uh, deflect them? Apple's bad earnings or at least bad perceived earnings to kind of buy the dip and boy oh boy we got that answer not only did we get that answer we got that answer pre-market everything started turning green pre-market you had Microsoft green Amazon green uh, Netflix Meta so forth and so on and it was like wow the bulls are really uh, doing their job and the question was going into Friday session if you watch the Thursday night video can the bulls reclaim the 50-day moving average, right? That was the big key. Because again, the 50-day moving average, again, especially for newer traders, the 50-day moving average is everything, okay? It's a judge, jury, and executioner for the key of a next trend for the market. The 10-day is the birth of the trade. The 50-day is the birth of the trend. And we talked about that uh, 364s, right? The 364s uh, on the 50-day moving average. And the only question was, was there going to be a fight, right? Because usually... There is a fight at the 50-day moving average, where it's, whether it's on the way down or whether it's on the way up, to see who has control. And boy, oh boy, there was no fight at all. Um, the market went through, the queues went through, the 64s, pre-market, and just never looked back. Absolutely never looked back. And not only uh, did we reclaim, um, not only did we reclaim the 50-day moving average, we are very, very close to reclaiming back uh, the 100-day moving average of roughly you know, the 68 area. So very, very bullish market action. Uh, you had more uh, jobs, uh, jobs labor data uh, came out on Friday. The jobs uh, is cooling off, right? They continue to cool. Uh, that's obviously more, more bullets for the Fed. Uh, unemployment got an uptick. So that's never a good thing. But boy, oh boy, the market has spoken. The people have spoken. The bulls have spoken. And it really does show you guys. And this is why we, we talk about all the time, you know, Nobody knows what, what's going to happen, okay? I, I pretty much say this on a, on a regular basis. We could plan for it, right? We could plan for it the same way I was sell biased uh, below the 50, below the 100, below the 150 day. But eventually, stocks get tired. Sellers get tired. And when sellers do get tired, that's exactly what we saw today, uh, this week. We had a massive rally and the kudos to the bulls. You know, they got back over a key level. Uh, earnings have been, you know, generally pretty good. Uh, you saw... Uh, in the last two weeks, Microsoft have good earnings. Uh, Amazon uh, have good earnings. Netflix uh, came out with a very, very nice quarter. Uh, names, for example, like Tesla, uh, and you know Tesla struggled, right? Tesla struggled. It had a bad quarter. Even Tesla had a nice uh, dead cat bounce. Got rejected off the twenty-day moving average. But going into you know going into this week again, does the market need a rest? Of course. Look, I mean, listen, and you got you got a six percent rise, uh, nearly seven percent rise. In a week, of course, you're going to have some profit taken at some point uh, throughout this week. But the key metric here is, and this is the whole point of understanding levels, as long as the bulls, right, guys, even if we have a, even if we have a res day on Monday or even an aggressive back test, keep in mind, we're up nearly 7% for the week. Even if we have a, a, an aggressive back test in the next day or so, right, keep this in mind. The longer we build and continue to defend that 364 level on the closing basis, right, that's the 50-day moving average the higher probability that we'll start rallying and that we could get into the Thanksgiving rally. We could finally maybe get the Santa Claus rally. We could spill over uh, into the first quarter of the January effect. So as long as the bulls, right, as long as the bulls uh, continue to defend 364 on the closing basis, uh, risk could be put back on. And if they do start losing back the 364 level and give back the 50-day moving average, right, basically right here, right, what happens is a series uh, a sell-off as well. So kudos, right? Kudos to the Bulls. Uh, they did an absolute great job. Um, and you know, again, here we go. You know, here we go. Here, here's a seasonal. Uh, here's a seasonal strength uh, in the market. So let's talk about some names, right? Let's talk about some individual names, kind of where they are, where they came from, uh, where they're going to be. Let's start off with Tesla. So Tesla, at some point, always remember the stock's gonna that that always reverse, at least initially. Okay, are always going to be the stocks that had a flawed catalyst. So for example, Tesla did not have a good quarter, okay? And this is why you saw Tesla put an inverted hammer on Friday. Uh, but you can see here the importance levels here of uh, Tesla here. This 230 level uh, down the road is gonna be very, very important. 230, 
If it starts reclaiming back this 230 level, it's going to seize back this 150-day moving average. However, okay, and this is kind of what we talk about both sides of the equation. Uh, you see this whole this whole line here, this burgundy line. This burgundy line is uh, the burgundy line here is the 200-day. Okay, it did a great job reclaiming it on Friday. The key to Tesla is if it loses the 200-day moving average, and that's a pretty big if. But if it loses the 200-day moving average, then the sellers will start to take control. Uh, look at Amazon, right? Let's look at Amazon. Amazon, it's exactly a par perfect case study of what happens when stocks reclaim back the 50-day moving average, right? So here is Amazon reclaimed back the 50-day moving average on earnings, right? Started a move. Again, it's Amazon, again, it's had, had a big move. Is it possible it reclaims, uh, it comes back and back test the five day. Yeah, that's kind of where you want to re-enter your re-enter your position. Again, you don't want to chase Amazon here. Amazon one has gone from 118 uh, to 140 in five days. Again, you'd like to see a back test in the next couple of days uh, to kind of buy it into strength. Uh, look at a name like Microsoft. Again, another case study of what happens when it stocks hold, right? You see this blue line? When they hold the five day, that's the whole point of the bulls and the queues holding the five day. The longer they could hold it now going to the future, the higher probability of a run-up. Again, Big, big move, just like Amazon Notes, obviously needs a little bit of a rest. Uh, Apple, uh, Apple, despite its uh, ugly little quarter, right? You know, the stock actually held serve, held the five-day moving average. Is it out of the woods? Not yet, but boy, oh boy, if it could reclaim back, right? You can see this whole area here. If it could reclaim back the 50 and the 150-day moving average, this thing is going to start to rise as well. And just again, a case study of why it's so important to, to, to cover the 50, uh, reclaim the 50 day moving average. Let's look at NVIDIA, right? We talked about NVIDIA for the last couple of days. We had some phenomenal moves on NVIDIA uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, even the last couple of months, even going back to October. You can see the first time when it reclaimed the 50 day moving average, uh, the stock went from 440 all the way to 476 in five sessions. You can see here what happened when it lost the 50 day moving average, the stock went from 449 all the way down to 392. So Friday was the first day it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, right? That's a big, big deal. Now the key is for N NVIDIA bulls ahead of their uh, November 21st earnings release day, the key for the bulls are they need to keep on building, right? Keep on holding this uh, th 443 level and keep on building off the previous day's range. If it does hold and starts you know, building above the previous day's range, again, I don't know if it's going to get to 476, ahead of earnings or even, you know, who knows even what happens at earnings, but at least now you see your measured potential. So very, very uh, big, strong move there as well. Uh, look at a name like Meta, right? Meta as well. Look what happened, you know, on, look what happened three days ago when it reclaimed back the 50-day moving average, right? It's gone from 301 all the way up to almost 320. It's again, it's a big deal, guys. The 50-day moving average is an absolute big deal. So if you are a brand new trader, uh, especially into this channel, just write this down on a sticky pad. If you're wondering if a stock is a buy or a sell, if the stock is above the 50-day moving average, it's bullish. If the stock is below the 50-day moving average, it's bearish because it's under supply. So when you hear me talk about stocks reclaiming supply, that's what I'm talking about here. So when you look at the Qs, right, we reclaim supply. So as long as we stay above supply and stay above this 364 level, and again, we don't need to go up every single day. Again, the market needs a little bit of a break for us. It's, it's just healthy. Even the biggest bulls will turn around and go, I can't buy the Qs. They just went from 342 to 369 in a week. How can I possibly buy the queue? So we need an organic back test just for the market, just to kind of decompress a little bit and get its feet under themselves, uh, kind of relax a little bit and kind of have stocks, you know, kind of rest to kind of distribute for the next move up. So it's very, very uh, important. Uh, when you look at the SPY, we'll look at the SPY, same thing. Had a massive, massive run here from 409 uh, all the way up to 436, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Here's the key for the spies. If the spies can get back above 438, you see this whole channel here, guys? This is the this would be the highest level in this whole channel above the 50-day. It's above the 50-day. The key is don't give back the 433 level on the close, but the next leg up on the spies is to reclaim back this 438, which is going to be very, very important. And let's look at the IWM. The IWM was obviously the redheaded stepchild uh, of all the indexes for the whole year. And, and this week, man, it, first of all, Friday, it had a 2.5% move, right? Did it wake up speculation money? Did it not? Again, it's not really my thing. I don't really don't trade small and mid-cap stocks. But the point is, these names uh, obviously got juiced. And again, we talked about names. Maybe it falls into the sector. But we talked about names, for example, like Instacart on Friday, right? 
Stocks have gotten beaten down, long time goes. Instacart put up a $2 move. That's pretty damn big. So once you start seeing the crap start waking up, and again, I'm not really saying crap and IWM is our holding partners who are dancing around uh, doing the tango together, but it's it's kind of a, it's not really a coincidence when the, the redheaded stepchild is finally put it, you know pulling up uh, the crap stock. So again, very, very bullish action uh, this week. Again, it really does show you that nobody knows something, nobody knows anything. Be prepared for both sides of the market. Don't put yourself in a corner that you have to be right. I don't have to be right, okay? I have to be prudent. I have to be an adult, but I don't need to be right. That's the, why we always make sure we have a plan for both sides of the market and put ourselves in the position of strength, not a position of weakness. Guys, have a great weekend. God bless. Uh, right now, it's about 9.37 uh, a.m. Eastern time, Saturday morning. I don't know when this video is going to be released sometime uh, this weekend, maybe Saturday night, Sunday morning. But the point is, guys, continue to study, continue to work. Um, the point is when the bulls when the bulls and the bears are there, usually you're going to have some unpredictable, irrational moves, and that's our job. Our job is not to try to figure them out. Our job is to adapt to them. Guys, God bless. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Monday. Take care.